Hey guys, welcome to Functional Print Friday. So I recently found out that the transfer case in our Toyota Highlander needs to be replaced. And I'm not one to obsess over doing all my own auto repair. I typically do things like oil changes and brakes and bearings and stuff like that. But the dealership wanted $5,300 for this job, so I couldn't resist at least taking a crack at it myself. Um, but since I'm gonna be under the vehicle for a fair amount of time and have a fair amount of work to do, I wanted to get it high off the ground higher than you would typically get it on a normal set of jack stands. So I picked up these giant jack stands that'll get the vehicle all the way up to about 42 or 43 inches, I think, off the ground. Um, but when I got them, uh, I realized that giant jack stands like this are not designed for normal cars. They have uh, huge metal pads um, at the top. Uh, it's really designed for you know something like a semi truck with a large frame. Uh, so I had to make some adapters uh, to basically support the car on top of this. Otherwise, that pad was just going to hit um, the underside of the car and the, the part that you want to support, the pinch weld, wasn't even going to rest on the pad. It would just basically destroy the, the, uh, the, the rocker panel um, and the undercarriage uh, cover uh, before the weight of the car actually even got onto the jack stand. So, uh, no, the car is not sitting on a 3D print, but I did use 3D printing to design the pieces that I needed to support this. And it's not the first time I've used 3D printing for prototyping something. Um, and I thought, you know, I think it'd be a great thing to cover on the channel. Again, it's one of those 3D printing is such an additive tool to so many other hobbies. In this case, I made these out of metal. Um, but you know what, let's, uh, let me jack the back of this up so I can get one of these jack stands out and I'll show you what I mean. All right, so I pulled it out from underneath the car. Um, you can get an idea what the top of the jack looks like. And this steel pad here uh, is what the frame of a vehicle is meant to rest against. And this thing is absolutely massive. That's a three quarter inch piece of plate steel. And this is six inches uh, across. So I wouldn't have any concern with the pinch weld of the car sitting on this flat surface. I think it's wide enough that it would be supported okay. Um, but the sheer width of this meant that these guys that are welded on here at the sides to, main, uh, to stop the frame from slipping off, um, one of them would be digging into the underbody of the car and the other one would be digging right into the rocker panel on the car. So this is the piece that I designed and made to go on here. And let me get this off and we can work on it on the bench. All right, and here is the piece that I just took off of the top of that jack stand. This is the piece that I designed and made, or actually four of them I made, uh, to support the underside of the vehicle or to transfer the load from the underside of the vehicle down to that jack pad um, without damaging the underside of the car. And this is made from two by two uh, steel tubing. Uh, there's a cut here, obviously, and I'll cut here, uh, a notch in it, and then there is a plate welded inside to keep this guy from uh, folding over under load. But how did I know that this was going to fit? How did I know that this size was going to clear all of the obstructions underneath the car at all four corners where I needed to jack it up? How did I know where I needed to position this notch? How did I know that two by two tubing was going to be tall enough to get me away from those fingers on the side of the jack stand pad? Well, you guessed it, that's where 3D printing comes in. Um, I designed this and then printed it and tested this underneath the vehicle. Obviously, I didn't put any load under it. All I needed to do was basically just um, get under the car uh, with the, the arm of the jack so I could see where those fingers were, um, position this up against the underside of the, the vehicle, and make sure that I was going to clear. And actually, the first design didn't quite clear. I needed to shift this notch uh, a little bit further to the side uh, so that I cleared the rocker panel um, and I think the front. I think the back cleared in Rev1. Um, but the front did not. Uh, and this was a quick print. I did this at 0.2 millimeter. Um, I think this printed in, I don't know, maybe 25 minutes. Uh, and I was able to iterate, print another one. And then I had this to work from when I did the metal working for the real thing. So I just copied this exactly. In fact, it made the setup of everything really easy. Um, when I sent the fence, fence position on my bandsaw to cut the notch, um, when I set this up in the drill press to drill the holes, I just put this one in the place of the raw stock 
uh, got centered up and then did the actual work uh, times four on the steel ones. So like I said, this is not the first time that I've used 3D printing as a prototyping process for uh, you know, whatever material I actually want to build in. I've used it for metalworking, I've used it for woodworking. Uh, let me know down in the comments. I'm curious to hear maybe what you've used 3D printing for from just a prototyping perspective, even if ultimately you were going to use another process uh, to build the final part. So short video today, guys. Uh, full disclosure, I was actually a bit uh, preoccupied with uh, something else, a new toy that arrived today. And I'll show it to you in a second. Um, but what kind of was the straw that broke the camel's back, I guess you could say, is when I was fabricating these, um, to get this slot cut into here, uh, I drilled a hole here, drilled a hole here, and then made uh, two cuts in with a bandsaw uh, to come down to those holes. I cleaned everything up with a carbide burr and a file. It worked okay, but it was time consuming. And it's just not really the easiest way to do something like that. It was yet another instance of, wow, if I had a milling machine, uh, I could chuck this up in the vise and just uh, make this, this, slot in, this slot here in, in one cut with, uh, with an end mill. Uh, so I pulled the trigger, finally picked one up. Uh, I went with the PM728VT from Precision Matthews. It's an all Taiwanese made machine, uh, a nice step up from the Chinese stuff. Uh, all I've done is really pull the top of the crate off and just kind of mess with some of the, uh, the hand wheels and such. Hasn't been plugged in, haven't done anything else, but I am really excited to sort of dip my toe into the water and learn some uh, manual mill machining. This machine is also really good for CNC conversions. In fact, uh, Precision Matthews sells a, a ball screw kit and uh, uh, even a set of motors for it. I may end up doing that in the future, but for now, I really just want to learn how to use this machine um, in manual mode to be able to do uh, stuff like this and some other projects. I'm sharing this with you guys because there's probably going to be some videos coming up on the channel. Uh, not every week, but... Uh, uh, once in a while, uh, touching on some projects as it relates to um, some equipment for, for the mill, or I should say probably for the tooling for the mill. Uh, I'd like to make a, a rack for some R8 collets, uh, some other tooling storage, um, and I have some ideas for uh, some 3D prints to even enhance the functionality of this machine as well. So, guys, if this is your first time in the channel, uh, I do a new video like this every single Friday that solves a problem around the house, around the shop, uh, just generally makes something better. So if you enjoyed this, please consider hitting that subscribe button. And if you're already subscribed and you like this video, uh, let me know that. Hit the like button. Uh, it's useful to know what type of content you guys like, and I'll try and make more of that stuff. Uh, and if you do choose to subscribe, guys, I will see you next Friday.